I've been expecting you. Oh, forgive me. We haven't been formally introduced, have we? Well, my name is... Oh, but my name is unimportant, really. After all, you didn't come here to learn my name, did you? No. You came here because I am an expert. An expert on the terrors of the night. You've been admiring my library, haven't you? I've read all of those books, you know, and more. What we are about to explore is a vast subject and absolutely fascinating. There have been so many books written about ghosts. Are they just words on a piece of paper, nothing to be afraid of? Or do you find when you read them very late at night that they seem very real? <laughs> imagination. It's a lovely thing to have to entertain you on a long and boring day, but when it's dark, very dark, and you are walking a midnight mile through a lonely countryside, those shadows you see begin to twist and breathe, taking on shapes of all manner of ghoul and monster, and then they reach out and grab you. Do they? Or is it just your imagination? The Ghost Belonged to Me, by Richard Peck. A story lives within these covers, a strange, wonderful, mysterious world waiting to come to life. Take your imagination, use it as a key to unlock this world, and then you can step inside and meet Alexander Armsworth. He's 13 years old, never seen a ghost before, never believed in ghosts until that peculiar young girl in his class, Blossom Culp, told him something that would change his life forever. Oh, Blossom, it's you, doggone it. I've got something to tell you, and you better listen. You got nothing to tell me that I want to hear. It's about something that belongs to you, only you don't know it. And according to my mama, what you don't know about could mean the death of you. What is it you wanted to tell me? My mama sees the unseen, and she can even see into the future. Well, maybe your mama should see a doctor. Now, Alexander, my mama says for me to tell you that she's seen the unseen in your barn. She did. She saw one of them halos, sure enough, right in your barn. I don't know why I ever listen to a word you say. Nobody else ever does. You better pay heed to that halo. Your barn glows pink, and it's a sure sign it's haunted. The halo tells it, and the color tells who. What do you mean, who? The kind of ghost that's haunting it. Yours is pink, so that means it's a ghost of a young girl. Died before she grew up. Is this what you came here to tell me? I'm telling you all this because my mama says you're receptive. You can make contact with the unseen if you take a notion oh, to. That's it. That ghost, it belongs to you, Alexander Armsworth. Alexander was left with Blossom's outrageous suggestion about the ghost in the barn and his own imagination, or maybe, heaven forbid, a real ghost. Oh, that's it, Blossom. Gone too far. Neck. 
Come on out. I know it's only you in there. Should. been on that bridge. You were right, kid, but how did you know? Well, she told me. She, she brought me out here. Who? I don't see anybody. What are you talking Her, about? Down the road, at the bottom of the hill. Look. I don't see anybody, I tell you. Wait! Don't go! I want to talk to you. Am I going to see you again? I don't know what you're looking at, kid, but I don't see anybody. No. No, I can't. She belongs to me. If you were to ask Alexander Armsworth whether or not there are such things as ghosts, I imagine he might have a strong opinion. Did Alexander ever see that girl again? Well, I could tell you. Or you could read the book that tells their story, if you are brave enough. He kept his feelings a secret, though. Well, you know, people tend to disbelieve what a young boy might say. I mean, young people are known for their vivid imaginations, after all. <laughs> uh, what? Oh, yes, I know what time it is. I'll be with you shortly. You must forgive the intrusion. His manners leave a lot to be desired. Mm, yes, now let's see, where was I? Oh, yes, are there such things as ghosts? Mm. Well, perhaps your question can be answered by this story. Washington Irving wrote it in 1820, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. It's become an American classic. This book will take hold of your imagination and rattle it like an earthquake and leave you with memories 
of a trip into absolute terror. It all began when a young soldier in the American Revolutionary War had his head knocked off by a cannonball. To the good people who lived in Sleepy Hollow, he became a legend. The people believed in that legend because they had so often seen the terrifying headless horseman galloping across the countryside in search of his missing head. The night of this story, he was to ride one more time. Indeed, Mr. Craig. Forgive me, but why is it you refuse to call me by my first name, Ichabod? Ichabod? Yes. I'm sorry. Painful to my ears. Oh. Mr. Crane, however, has a charming ring to it. Yes? <laughs> <laughs> and tell me, dear lady, how does the sound of Mrs. Crane strike your delicate ears? <laughs> Mrs. Crane being your mother, I take it. Oh, from. I missed you with the dad. And I you, Katrina. I had things to do. <clears throat> Out uh, wrestling with the pigs again, eh, Mr. Bones? There ain't no sport in wrestling pigs, school teachers. But whomping a bit on swine's another thing altogether. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, uh, Mr. Bones, <clears throat> how many muscles do you have? <laughs> Counting your head, of course. May I have the honor of escorting you to your home, Katrina? The dance being almost over, you should have a man with you. The horseman scaring folks around the countryside and all. Um, Miss Katrina is being escorted home by me. <clears throat> like I said, she ought to have a man with her, Ichabod. I beg your pardon. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, Miss Katrina, I... I for, uh, forgive me, Miss Katrina. I don't know how I could have been such a fool. Forgive me. <laughs> oh, that's quite all right, Mr. Crane. There's no injury done. In fact, I should thank you. Mr. Crane, it might be better if Brom does escort me home tonight. But, uh... I do fear the headless horseman, and it will take you so very far out of your way. Well, uh, I don't mind. You heard the lady, Ichabod. She wants me to protect her from the horseman. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> Headless horseman, indeed. <laughs> you won't be talking that way after you run into him. <clears throat> I seen him. <clears throat> like to freeze my spine, it did. Oh. And you can't outrun that stallion of his, no matter what manner of horse flesh you ride. Well, uh, <clears throat> my uh, horse uh, <clears throat> gun powder. <laughs> He may not look like much, but he'll he'll do, I'm sure. Why, that stallion of his breathes fire and runs faster than a March wind. Poppycock. <laughs> empty stories for empty heads. Oh, Mr. Crane, I do hope you will be careful. I would hate to see anything happen to you. Oh, well, don't you worry, Miss Katrina. I'll be careful. I... I can defend myself if anything should come along. Maybe you should leave right away before it gets too late. The later it gets, the worse it gets. Worse, yes. <clears throat> well, um, uh, perhaps you're right. <laughs> um, not that I'm afraid, of course, <laughs> but... Uh... If I were you, Ichabod Crane, I'd take another path home tonight. The horseman's been spied in the valley three nights running. <laughs> Mr. Bones, really, your obvious attempts at frightening me are falling on deaf ears. Even if there were such a specter, and I'm not, uh, I'm not saying for one minute that I believe in such a notion, even if there were, I mean, what on earth would he want with me? Your head. They say that if you cross the church bridge, you'll be safe. If you make it that far, Oh, headless horseman, indeed. Can you believe such idiocy, gunpowder? <laughs> Perhaps a storm is brewing, old friend, eh? <clears throat> Maybe I shouldn't have left that party. Maybe I should have stayed and fought it out with that Brom Bones. <laughs> oh, who goes there? Oh, 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 rabbit, no doubt. <laughs> 
<clears throat> Probably just a rabbit. Mm. Let's pick up the pace a bit, uh, gunpowder. I'd like to be across that church bridge before the uh, storm uh, strikes. Mm. Uh, what's the problem, old boy? What is it? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <clears throat> what seems to be the problem? I got a rock in a shoe here. I can't see anything. <laughs> uh, age. Age, I believe, is your particular problem. Age and a belly that will soon be scraping along the road. Who? <laughs> 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 oh! Who there said who? <laughs> Fix one's mind plays. <laughs> Hello. Hello there. <laughs> Going. My way? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh dear. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> are you, um, are you from around these parts? <laughs> I've uh, just been at a party over at Van Tassel's and, uh, <clears throat> where are you, uh, Headed. Uh, uh. Oh, yes, let's, let's go, Gunpowder. <clears throat> oh, what's going to happen to me? Oh, oh, oh. I think he's getting closer. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he is following. Oh, my goodness. Oh, slow down. Oh, yeah. Now, maybe if we just walk along. Oh, dear. And pretend. Nothing's wrong. He's walking too. He's walking too. I don't know what this means. Oh, oh, whoa, gunpowder! My foot, uh, my foot came out of the stirrup here. Yeah, oh my goodness! I thought. Oh, my God! Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. Help! Gunpowder! Let's go! Help me! Help me, somebody, help me! Gunpowder! Go faster! Gunpowder! <laughs> the headless horseman a ghost? Or was it just Brom Bones trying to scare Ichabod to death? The following morning, all they found was Ichabod's horse, his coat, and strangely enough, a smashed pumpkin lying in the road. What happened to Ichabod? 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 Why don't you read the book and see what you think? Mm -hmm. Oh, I was just lying down here for a little rest. I have such a busy night ahead of me. I've been feeling a little run down lately. I should change my diet. But that's impossible, I'm afraid. Thank you. 
Midnight, my favorite time. The witching hour. <laughs> and the dark gives me such comfort. <laughs> Thank you. Now, let's see, where was I? Oh, yes. The clock reminded me of something very important. John Belair's built an entire story around that lovely ticking sound. The house with a clock in its walls. Oh, the way these authors can think of to scare us. Tick, tick, tick. It's a most enjoyable sound. <laughs> that is, of course, unless the ticking comes from a clock with rather a deadly nature. Such a clock existed in the house of Jonathan Barnabel. Now, this clock was... This... This... All right, now that's enough! Oh. This clock was actually to threaten the very lives of old Jonathan and his young nephew, Lewis, and everyone else on this planet. Now, Lewis, poor lad, had lost both of his parents in an auto crash, and there was nowhere else in the entire world that he could live except with old Jonathan. Lewis was about to begin an adventure like no other in his life. He was to live in Jonathan's peculiar old house, and he was to come face to face with that ghost who was searching for that cursed clock. Well, Lewis, this is going to be your room. Now, you must be tired after your long journey. I think you should go right to bed. But, Uncle Jonathan, it's early. We go to bed early around here, boy. What are we going to do tomorrow, Uncle Jonathan? You'll see. I have things planned. Things. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Suddenly, Lewis sat up, wide awake. What was that knocking? He tiptoed to the door as carefully as he could. He was frightened, but he was also curious. came into his mind. Was Jonathan crazy? His parents had always warned him about crazy people. Lewis followed Uncle Jonathan all the way downstairs to the library. His uncle Jonathan was certainly a strange person. Why did he keep knocking on the walls? What was he looking for? Yeah, I hope this isn't a distant relative. Jonathan Barnevelt, wizard first degree. Holy smokes! Uncle Jonathan's a wizard! Now Uncle Jonathan was climbing up into the dark attic. What 
was going on in this strange old house. Lewis's curiosity made him follow. Where'd he go? An organ. for breaking this old thing. What's this? Doomsday? And who is Isaac Izzard? A witch. Ah! Lewis, you have a lot to learn about sneaking around. Isaac Izzard was a witch, so he hid the doomsday plan in the old organ. I thought I'd looked everywhere in this old house. It used to be his house, you know. What is the doomsday plan, Uncle Jonathan? It's a plan to destroy the world, of course. He's got the whole world wired up. The clock, boy. The clock in the walls. Old Izzard hid the clock in the walls so he could come back and blow the planet right off the map. Come back? From where? From the dead, boy. Where else? You see, he died before he could set the alarm, and it won't go off until he does. I hope. I was hoping that this parchment would lead us to where he hid the blasted thing, but it doesn't. Just like old Izzard, he is trying to drive me crazy. You saw me stopping the clocks. I do it every night, so I can hear old Izzard's clock ticking. Listen. Of course you can. You can hear it all night long. That's why I've got so many clocks of my own. I'd rather hear them than that old ticker of Izzard's. I only stop them at night when I go to look for his. Well, why don't you just tear down the walls and get it? Oh, I could. I could. I could tear down the whole house and set it off by accident. Uncle Jonathan, I got a question about the books and stuff in the secret panel. I, I peeked. Yes, I know. Well, they say you're a wizard. Well, I am, as a matter of fact. I was going to show you those books and things before long, anyhow. And my, 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 my crystal ball. And here, my hand of glory. When the candle is lit, I can stun anyone so they can't move if they so much as look at it. So you'd better behave yourself. You're just teasing me, aren't you, Uncle Jonathan? Although you really had me going there for a second with the, with the witches and the crystal ball and the, the hand of glory and the doomsday clock. Yes, Lewis, would you fetch me that tobacco barrel up there? I can't reach it. Abba, baby, bachabi. Uncle Jonathan, what's happening? This is fantastic. I'm flying. You are a wizard. Well, boy, I never met a wizard who lied. Maybe I am going to be a wizard, too, Uncle Jonathan. Well, we'll see about that. How do you do this? <laughs> this is terrific. That was great, Uncle Jonathan. <laughs> yes. And then we'll find that doomsday clock. You and me. After all, I am part of the family. Tarby, what you doing? What's it look like, Porterville? Does it look like I'm playing checkers, huh? I wish I could learn how to hit a baseball like you can. Nah, you can't. It's not something you learn. It's something you gotta be born with. It's a gift, Porterville, and I got the gift and you don't. You going trick-or-treating tonight? No, Halloween's for kids. Yeah, you're right. I guess me and my Uncle Jonathan probably just cast some spells or something. Maybe we'll eclipse the moon if we feel up to it. You're not only little, you're loony. What do you think you are, 
a witch or something? Wizard is the term if you want to be professionally precise. Yep, we are. It runs in the family. It's a gift. You gotta be born with it. You're a liar, Marvel. You're a big, loony liar. I am not, and I can prove that I'm a wizard. Oh, yeah? Well, then do it. Just do something wizardy. I dare you. Well, I can't. Right here, right now. Yeah, I thought so. Well, uh, I mean, I can. But not until midnight. Midnight's a special time for us wizards. Okay, then I'll meet you somewhere at midnight. Well, it being Halloween and all, you ought to just love to spook some goblins up in the graveyard. And it's good and dark at midnight. Just us and the dead. Yeah, that, uh, that sounds okay to me, I guess. Okay, then, at midnight at the graveyard. Well, if you're a wizard, then you can raise the dead, right? Yeah. This is one thing I gotta see. Wiz. Is this some kind of showdown? Well, look on it as an opportunity. You're a new kid in town. You gotta prove if you're hot stuff or not. Yeah, right, midnight. I'll raise the dead. Midnight. I'm late. Tarby! Where are ya? Tarby! It's me! It was Barnaville! Very funny, Tarby. I know it's you. Sit down first. for a minute, it'll come to us. Shine the light down the center of the circle. Where'd you get that from? I don't know. It just popped into my head. Now what, Wiz? Than ever. But I just gotta talk to 
Hallelujah. Hey, listen to that. It's been taking away a storm since just after midnight. Uncle Jonathan, I went to the graveyard and raised the dead. I guess I bragged it to Tarby. And he dared me to try it. So I did. And Uncle Jonathan, I did it. I did it. So you use my books, eh? You raised the dead, eh? Yes, sir. You are part of the family. You passed the test. Then you aren't angry? No, you should have asked me before you got into my books and papers, but it's okay. Listen, the clock is having fits. So go on. Tell me, what did you do? Well, I did just what you put down in the book. But the tooth didn't have any name written on it. And the book says it's important to have the name of the person written in the circles. Oh, you've got to have the name. So I just sat there and thought about it. And when the name came to me, I wrote it down. S-E-L-E-N-N-A. And boom, bang, out she popped. Selena? You wrote down Selena? Yeah. Scariest thing I ever saw. Chased us out of the graveyard. Uncle Jonathan, what's the matter? Selena was the name of Mrs. Izzard. That's what's got into the clock. Now that she's free, she's going to want to set off the doomsday plan. You mean I raised Mrs. Izzard from the dead? It looks like it, kid. We've got to find that clock before Selena does. Let's hurry. Now, there are three spots where the ticking is the loudest. This is one of them. Because he hated the whole world and he wanted to come back and destroy it after he died. Why is Mrs. Izzard looking for the clock? Didn't he tell her where he hid it? Oh, they didn't talk much. Why not? Well, he hated her too. <laughs> not there. There might be room in there for just an itty bitty clock. But no luck. If Mr. and Mrs. Hizzard hated each other so much, why is she coming back to set off the doomsday clock for him? Well, it was theirs together. Whoever came back first would get to set it off. She's most probably absolutely delighted to deprive him of the pleasure. They really are wicked. No love in that family. No love, but they were brilliant and very logical. Then there's no point in our being logical, is there? What do you mean? Well, if his magic was logical, it probably can't understand magic that isn't logical. Maybe we can confuse it. Let's use some magic that doesn't make any sense at all. We'll just make it up as we go along. You mean like some crazy magic word or action would lead us to where the doomsday clock is hidden? Right. Why don't you play a magical song on the organ? <laughs> well, I can't play the blasted thing, but... But we can try. Take me out to the ball game. Aha! I got it. Baseball games are played on diamonds. And diamonds are a suit and a deck of cards. So what? This doesn't make any sense at all. Good. Then we're doing it right. Okay, magical cards, do your stuff. They're all the eight of diamonds. What does that mean? That means that the number eight makes no sense at all. Oh, tell me, mystical eight ball. Lewis. Where is the clock? Lewis, I bought that in a toy store. It only says yes, no, or maybe. Where is the clock? Uncle Jonathan, it's in the coal bin. Well, I'll be jiggered. It didn't make any sense, but it worked. Let's go. Stand back, boy. The doomsday clock. In a secret passage. Now what? Those must be the wires. They're connected to all 
all the capitals of the world. No touch! Why? It might go off. I thought you said it wasn't set yet. Well, you have to dismantle it very carefully, like a time bomb. Now, it may not go off. On the other hand... <laughs> Thank you for doing my work for me. I do hope you haven't tired yourselves. Well, look at you, Jonathan. Trapped by my hand of glory. I'm surprised at you. You should know better than to stare at it. Boy! Turn around and face me. Don't you want to kiss your hand Now, it'll only make it worse for you in the end. Uncle Jonathan, what do I do? Turn around. And I'll let you watch what I do to your old fool of an uncle. Ah! And then it'll be your turn. Doomsday is here! You did it, boy. You saved the day. So much for logic. <laughs> Hello, my beauty. <laughs> the hand of glory is really very powerful, you know. I've used it several times to my own advantage. But what about Jonathan and Lewis? Hmm? Did they live happily ever after? Or did Isaac Izzard return and do battle with them? Hmm? I can't say. Oh, I could, of course, but I won't. I don't want to give away any more of the story and spoil your enjoyment in reading it. Now, you can believe in these stories or not. I really don't care. I have my own opinion on the subject of ghosts and goblins and things that go bump in the night. And those theories always amuse me. Uh, that a witch cannot cross over running water, that uh, black cats cause bad luck, or that a vampire casts no reflection in a mirror. You can either believe it or not. <coughs> I believe in all of it, you see. I must. Well, I really have to go now. I have to be home before dawn. Perhaps you would like to come with me. We could grab a quick... <laughs> Alexander, I need you. Follow me. Ha, 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 ha,